Hi, everybody. Welcome to New Frontiers in Functional Medicine, where we are interviewing the best minds in functional medicine. And of course, today is no exception. You can see if you're watching this on YouTube, who I am sitting next to in the virtual space. Let me tell you about her. And we are going to jump in to today's podcast sponsored by and about Rupa. This is Dr. Kate Henry. Uh, she is the head of medical education at Rupa Health. And before joining Rupa, uh, Dr. Kate was the founding director of functional medicine at Sonare Today, a 13 location practice on the East Coast of the US that combines therapy, coaching, natural medicine, and more to help over 8,000 people thrive. That's very cool, Kate. I want to learn about it. Uh, Dr. Kate, Dr. Kate's training in naturopathic medicine, biofeedback, and nutrition allow her to emphasize root cause treatments that are both low cost and effective in order to help keep functional medicine accessible to all. That's awesome. Dr. Henry, welcome to New Frontiers. Thanks for having me. I feel like I belong here. We have a lot of the sh same shared values. I just, it's, you know, I know Rupa also has that value of really kind of pulling the branch down. So functional medicine and functional medicine education uh, is available to all. And the fact that you were so successful in uh, Sonari today, you know, that it was massive and you were bringing affordable functional medicine to so many people is just, it's impressive. It's important. And I want to understand that. So let's move through everything I've just thrown out. Um, and I want you to tell me about Rupa, you know, for the, for the, for the, for anybody who doesn't know, I mean, you've really taken the Rupa platform, the Rupa product has taken functional medicine by storm. And as I say to you uh, and, and team Rupa frequently, it's, you know, it's an essential tool that we didn't know was essential until it was in our hands. And now we can't live without it. My team absolutely loves who and what you're about. Mm -hmm. We all do actually, because it frees my team up and makes them happy. But anyway, so introduce us to, you know, the core Rupa offering, and then we'll take it from there. Absolutely. So hi guys, thanks for having me today. Um, Rupa, we have one mission and it's to help doctors and healthcare practitioners bring root cause medicine to the world. <clears throat> and what that means is, that we need to make this more accessible. So when you guys at home are thinking about functional medicine, you might be lucky enough to have a couple amazing doctors who take your insurance and spend 90 minutes with you once a month. But some of you don't live in an area where you have access to that, or you can't see your doctor often enough. And what Rupa did was took a group of people who were really passionate about this medicine and how it could heal the world. And they went to doctors and they said, what can we do to make your lives easier? How can we get you to reach more people? And the doctors told us, take this administration off our plate, right? Yeah. Design me tools to make my job easier. Design me tools to help my clients collect complicated labs. Design me tools to make an amazing food as medicine plan in under two minutes instead of it taking two hours. And so Rupa is really a company that's just answering the call and desires of functional medicine doctors so that they can help more people because we desperately need that right now. We desperately need it. We really do. Um, it needs to be broad. It needs to be accessible. So many people reach out to our clinic and we do practice virtually, um, but people want local providers. I mean, it's just, we're helping as many people as we can in this space, yep. um, but there are many, 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 many more that, that we're not able to reach. So we need to just pull that branch down. Um, it's true. Like, I, I reflect whenever I have a conversation with you guys, I, I just reflect on my residency, first of all, where we had a, a I was in a large integrative clinic done in, in Dunwoody, Georgia, and we had a full-time person just doing labs, mm. explaining, highlighting, you know, how you collect the kit, yeah. what time, like all of these details. And now in my practice, well, before we started using Rupa, you know, we had this massive closet full of kits. And we were drop shipping. I mean, it took um, it took a we were a smaller, much smaller actually than the clinic I was in in, in my residency, and it still takes a, a huge amount of time for my team. Yeah, and people don't get it right, and people need to reach out to us, and so that yeah. is hugely disruptive that you took that on. I'm so grateful because I mean, and I get it because I was in practice. I yeah. I was in practice, and Rupa came into my life and changed my practice and allowed me to help more people, which is why I fell in love with them. Um, but for the guys at home who don't understand what we're talking about, let me drill down a little bit. Yeah. 
everyone here has probably had the experience of learning about a comprehensive stool test and being like, oh, I want to go learn about my microbiome. I'm going to ask my primary care doctor to test me. And then you show up and your primary care doctor's like, I don't know how to do that for you. It's because these, these tests can't be done usually at LabCorp or Quest, the ones we're talking about, right? Where you look at your whole genome or specific parts of your genome, um, or you look at your microbiome, or you look at your hormones over the course of a month. In order for your doctor to order that for you, they have to be signed up with a specific company, right? And stock the kit in the office. That was the old way. And that's what prevented more doctors from doing those tests. And so even if you wanted them, they couldn't get it for you. With Rupa now, they click one button and that kit goes to your house and you can learn anything about your health that you want, which is a way that we're really helping consumers get access to the information they need while not overburdening our doctors who are already overburdened. And you integrate with our EMR. Do you, yeah. And I mean, what what more? That's huge. You know, what more <laughs> could we could we ask yeah. for that you're actually now integrated with our EMR? Are you integrated with other EMRs? We use practice yeah. better. Yeah, multiple, Servo, um, Healthy, you name it. Um, mm -hmm. Either we are integrated or are going to be integrated. And so for the non-practitioners at home, that means, guys, when you go get your microbiome test, your results will show up in front of your doctor. Yeah. So you don't have to like print them out, take them in, you know, it's right. just like the goal or is we don't have seat. to chase them down, you know, as yes. we spend a ton of time doing yes. you know, chasing them down, going to the website of the, of the, of the lab, looking yep. to see if they're available. Sometimes they tell us, sometimes they don't. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's just, <laughs> it's such a, it's such an expletive, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A million percent. Well, and, and you know, this It's like when you go from sort of a traditional practice setting and you decide, I want to do something different. I want to go into functional medicine. I want to start spending 90 minutes with my patients, getting to know them, finding their root cause. You have to change the way you practice entirely. And that's a big burden on the doctor. Usually they're having to either start their own practice or start over. And it makes it hard to really see as many people as you should. And so we just want more doctors going into this. And beyond that, more practitioners in general. We, I don't, most yes. people don't know this, like, we have a shortage of physicians in America already. Yeah. And over the next few years, we're going to be short over 30,000 primary care clinicians. Right now, half of the people in America live in a county without a single psychiatrist. Like this isn't going to get better. And so we need more of us trained to do root cause medicine to answer the health crises we're facing. And that's part of what Rupa is doing as well is making sure that providers of all types right? RDs. Uh, we have had some physical therapists and therapists take our root cause medicine trainings because they want to be part of the solution. And we need all of us right now. Amen to that. Yeah. Um, since you talk about education, so you started as just fulfilling this massive need for making these specialty labs easy for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I just want to underline an exclamation point that that's a huge deal. That's just huge for everybody. I mean, I remember one of my patients going home with three, maybe four kits that were important. I mean, this, these are, we see, we see people with complex issues here and reporting to Rhonda, our office manager, that she put them all under the bed, you know, she, cause she couldn't look at them. Like she was so just anxious. And so we, you know, we had to walk her through, okay, take one kid out today you know, let's talk you through, you know, we, we, we needed, we spent a lot of time uh, yep. making it doable. And of course it was worth it and it was important, but it was in fact, a lot of time. So what you're doing is, um, is just so is priceless. So that's your foundational product, um, you know, making labs available to everybody. And now you're branching out into education and you're, and you mentioned something about, um, you know, a, a food, food programs that your food plans that you're developing. So I want to talk about both, but let's first talk about your educational world, which is yeah. equally cool. Like, tell me about Rupa University. Yeah, absolutely. So we often get new clinicians come to us who are new to functional medicine and they're asking our customer service team. Well, I, you know, I've heard it's a good idea to order uh, a Lyme disease panel for my patients who have chronic joint pain and who've never really been tested or a comprehensive food allergy and sensitivity panel. But I don't know what to do with those results because I'm new to this. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. And so the answer to that from us was, okay, well, let's make a six week boot camp where you can run the test on yourself, which is very good for clinicians because they get that yes. empathy of like, oh, this is hard. 
Yeah. Right. Or like, oh, I have to collect this in a specific way at a specific yeah. time and find the lab. And yeah. it's, it's good for the practice. That's great to know. That it's by design. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Need to do it. <laughs> yes. And the kinesthetic aspect. Plus, it's like practitioner heal thyself. How many of us actually, as doctors and, and practitioners, take the time to check in on our own health yeah. once we get busy caring for others? So it's that moment of like pause, really get the kinesthetic aspect, touch the test, feel the test, get the test results in your hands. But then it's also six weeks of education and Q&A with a professional who is an expert in that test and in the condition being discussed. And so it's a nice way to introduce people so that they're ready to go. And when they start ordering a food sensitivity panel or whatever, they're really an expert by the time they set their first order. And then the client gets the best bang for the buck. Because what you don't want to do is order a client a microbiome test and then be like, what do I do with the 10 pages I just got back? Yeah, that's exactly right. right. Yeah, it's pretty daunting. Yeah, if you order a specialty test that you have not used yet, you know, chances are high that when you look at it, it's going to be a few minutes before your patient walks in the door and you're going to be, get, you'll break out in a cold sweat. Like it is mm-hmm. really nice to have an idea of what you're, what you're yeah. going into. How much is the boot camp? How much is it for that training? And like, it depends, yeah. but less than 400 bucks um, for including eight. So it's including mm-hmm. the test. So we try to keep it accessible again, because so many of our practitioners are just starting out and maybe they just started their own practice. Mm-hmm. They just took out a loan. They're yeah. still putting their furniture together. You know, like, yeah. it's like, let's keep it accessible. You were part of the Institute for Functional Medicine Bootcamp that we did. And yeah. it was right. And you came yeah, it was so and fun. tell us, like you, you talk to people and there were questions on questions on questions for an hour straight. People yeah. are hungry for this knowledge. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Robert Luby and I, the director of medical education at IFM, did that one, and it, they did a whole a full series with you. Yeah, it was fast. It was so fun. Yeah. It's so, it's always interesting for me. I mean, I've been lecturing on food allergies and sensitivities and intolerances for many, many, many years, and it's always interesting. And yeah, great, great, e- eager questions. People want to know for sure. Um, and it's, so, and it's, what, what, what time is, is it just an hour long? I know you probably, you don't want it to suck up somebody's day. Is it an hour long weekly? What is the structure of the boot camp? Most of our boot camps are like one to two hours of material per week pre-recorded. You go through it at your own pace and it really oh, okay. helps you dive deep into like physiology or, and, and treatment approaches and protocols. But then the live Q and a is just an hour with usually a pretty high profile doc. And you just ask your questions. And so what a lot of the doctors or practitioners will do is come and say like, here's my case, here's the results. Here's where I'm stuck. Can Mm -hmm. you please help? Um, And then we have our experts dive in right then and there. And it's really valuable because, you know, like in med school, we get case review, Yeah. but when you're out in the real world, you don't have a mentor or supervisor, unless you literally go out and find one sometimes if you're in private practice. So we're help, trying to help fill that gap a little bit. Such an important gap. So I was part of the live Q and I love doing stuff live. It's fun. Um, and I'll be doing, actually, I'll be jumping on in the not so distant future doing a, I think I'm going to be yep. doing a Q, live Q and A with True Diagnostic talking about some of their biological age testing. So that's going to be, that'll be really fun. I, I enjoy them. I just enjoy them quite a bit. One of the fabulous things, so as you said about my Q&A, it was packed with questions. There was there were way more questions than we could actually get to in that in that chunk of time. And the Rupa team gathered and collated all those questions and got them all answered. I know that Robert pinged me on a handful of questions and we got it done and we sent them out. So you actually completed. So anybody who had a question got an answer which is a heavy lift and it's an, it's, it's, it's a gift. So, you know, for clinicians listening that haven't participated uh, or are concerned because maybe you won't be heard or whatever it might be, you made it happen. So bravo to you. Thanks. That's the ethos (laughs) of the company really in general. When I was a practitioner using Rupa, I loved that I could trust their customer service team to take care of my patients, no matter what, like they had their back. It didn't matter how many times somebody messed up their Dutch chest and needed a new one or needed support or had questions like it the get it done and the leave no person behind ethos is very that's what guides us um because that's what doctors need and that's what doctors want Mm -hmm. and really you need it for the doctors themselves I mean how many of us really like the by the time you hire your first practitioner or your first support person the relief that you feel right Mm because it's a lot And, and I think we have an exercise we're actually developing like to, to go through with our employees, which is similar to what we did in med school, 
where we kind of take people through an appointment. And we go like, you're, you're going to be the patient, you're going to be the practitioner. And we show them like, what's it like to try to find somebody's root cause in five minutes versus 30 when you have the full history in front of you. And what was really interesting was I was doing this with one of our, with one of my coworkers and she, I was talking her through like, um, the USPS ref, USPSTF recommendations, which is for the guys at, at home who are listening. It's like, when you go into your doctor, you think you're there to talk about your joint pain. They have a list of 30 things in front of them that they're supposed to talk to you about from the United States Preventive Task Force, which is like, you're a 35 year old female, which means I need to be screening you for these three cancers, right? Like these two infections. And I have to get all that done in this visit and do a medication interaction check and make sure that nothing has changed with your health that's major or you have an updated family history. And now we have to talk about your joint pain. And it's really interesting when our when our um, teammates go through that because they're like, wow, this is hard. And no wonder we're helping these doctors because if we can take some of the other stuff off their plate, like, oh, in the middle of a visit, you get a call that somebody needs a new kit or somebody has a question about how to collect their urine sample. If you can take that away, you just give the practitioner more time to do what they do best. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And even, you know, when I was in a, a residency in a very established clinic, I mean, we we were paying someone full time to manage all of that. And yep. she wasn't managing all of it. There was yeah. still, you know, more management to happen peripheral peripherally with the rest of the team. And then it was yep. upon us to make sure we understood the test, et cetera, et cetera, and all of that. Right. So it's it's just a massive undertaking. But these tests are essential. We know that they're essential, uh, yeah. you know, for practice. And so yeah, again, my hat's off to to what you've done and what a, yeah, what a stressful training, just listening to you describe it. It's like, it's absolutely, it's just impossible. I mean, that's why, you know, that's why, that's why physicians are frustrated practicing in the, in the standard model, extremely frustrated and migrating over into our space as much as, you know, as much as they can. And that's why patients are frustrated. You know, you just, you, you know, that's a big, huge piece of, of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you touched on the idea of making food plans a lot easier. And that I was very excited when your CEO, Tara, mentioned to me that you were moving into using, leaning on AI in a way that was going to make our lives easier. I was pretty thrilled with the fact that you are, you know, early adopters of that in our space. So talk to me about these food plans and how can we access them and what can we do with them? So they're free on the platform. So guys, you can sign up for Ruba just to use the food plan. So all you do is you just type in someone's name and email. And then you have a couple fields you're going to fill out. What type of diet do you want them to eat? How many times a day are they eating? What food do they love? What food do they hate? What are they allergic to? How many calories do they need? And do you want them to get certain nutrients like omega-3s, right? Or vitamin D from their diet. And then within 30 seconds, the, the food planner will build you a meal plan for them. Here's why that's important. So many people who are practicing functional medicine are very good at telling their patient, Hey, you know what? You came in with terrible bloating and we did some root cause medicine testing for you and found out you have SIBO. Now I want you to go home and eat a low FODMAP diet. And what they're not good at, because it takes a long time, is telling someone how to do that successfully. So then you have patients who are like, okay, well, I'll just do Mount Ash and they're eating like steak and that's it <laughs> yeah. for three weeks, right? We can't have that. And not everyone has the time to build meal plans. There are not enough doctors or RDs who are trained to give every single person on the planet a meal plan. And so the easier thing for us to do is to use AI to build it for the doctor right when they need it to give to the client. So what that looks like, guys, is instead of you thinking, oh, shoot, now I have to be low FODMAP for six weeks. All I can eat is meat, <laughs> uh, which is what you would think if you read certain websites online. Um Instead, what the AI food planning tool will do is build you a whole meal plan full of recipes and delicious and nourishing food that actually makes it possible for you to do food as medicine. One of the things that I was such a, I worked with RDs at Tenare, and one of the things I was such a stickler for is two things, actually. One, you have to make sure their diet is nutrient replete. Most people who are building therapeutic diets for people do not know how many vitamins and minerals they're getting because they don't check because yeah. we don't have time. Yeah. And that doesn't serve someone like we are not here to give everyone supplements. 
the place we need to move as functional medicine practitioners is teaching our clients how to get these nutrients and medicines through what they eat every day. You have done such a good job of that in younger you, like just listening to that. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. This is why we vibe because you get it. It's like for people to do this long-term, they need to learn what to eat but they need to learn what to eat in a fun and delicious way and not a like, I'm going to eat some raw kale for my breakfast type of way. Um, So there's so much that goes into actually making that a reality. And so we wanted to just make it super easy and free and intuitive. And so I highly encourage you guys to go try it. That's very, very cool. Yeah. You know, we have a whole, or we we had for many, many, many years, we've just put it on hold recently, a a nutrition, in-depth nutrition training program where you know, uh, through affiliated with IFM. And we, so we've had a large, we still have a good sized nutrition team, but we always had interns with us and they were doing all of that AI work that now takes 30 seconds. It's mind blowing. I mean, we were building out our plans. We were evaluating for nutrients. We were individualizing, doing with doing preferences, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a massive lift. And we've had a large team assisting us in this. It's just extraordinary. Has it, how, I mean, how, are, are, is it is it a very popular tool? Has it been really embraced yep. by the community? Yeah, we thought only a few folks would use it, to be honest. And a ton of our folks are using it now every day, multiple times a day. Um, so building a meal plan, if you guys have never done it, I encourage, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I encourage you to try it. Mm-hmm. I mean- for our standard at our practice was everybody's meal plan needed to meet hundred percent RDI of every single nutrient in that day. That is a very hard thing to do. And when our RDs would first come and start working for us, it would take them eight hours to do one plan. Yeah. And yes. that's not uncommon. And when you're doing food as medicine like this, it has to be individualized for the client to actually do it. And so it frequently takes like three, four Long hours time. even. Well, and then you need, person. and you may need to be competent at creating recipes. I mean, our team yeah. had to develop that, that competency. That's a, it's, it's, it's not easy. No, there's <laughs> nothing. Really not. And there's nothing more personal because it's not just science. It's not just data. It's also like, what does your person like to eat? Yeah. Um, and, and where this is do what, they eat? Are they willing right. to go shopping? Do you know, and what kind of, what kind of grocery stores do they have access to? Yeah. You can't just like send some to the, somebody's to the farmer's market or the CSA or, you know, assuming they have, you know, we don't, it's, it's different for everyone. Yep. I remember needing to build out or, or our, our nutritionist needing to build out a plan for, for a guy who was a trucker and only ate gas station food. Like we literally had to for at least a few days to sign this basically yeah. mobile, yeah, mobile diet. But I will tell you that it he he had to pull gluten out and maybe dairy. He had to do two cornerstone things. He adhered to it. We succeeded at doing that. I mean, it's sub, it's absurd. I know it's absurd. I'm sure a lot of people are thinking that. But he adhered to it enough where he was able to experience the extraordinary relief of somebody whose first time you know, abstain from gluten, who's got, you know, a clear sensitivity and, 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 and dairy as well. So he stuck with this, got better. And that experience brought him back into his kitchen and real food. So that was our gateway, but yeah, I mean, that was a, that was a pretty crazy heavy lift. (laughs) Yeah. And that's the type of thing though. Like when you guys put in the work, he healed. Yeah. And when he was willing to do it and, you know, we met him where he was at we honored what he said his limitation was. He did it and his life was transformed actually. And he moved towards, you know, where we ultimately wanted him to be. And that was a whole foods diet, you know, where that's he was doing. brilliant. So that, that's what we want is we want you guys to be able to do that times four, right? Yeah. Cause if we save your RD four hours or three hours, that means your RD can see four times more people. Yeah. It's amazing. And then you have four of those guys who just went out and healed. So that's what happens when you use AI and you can scale is that you really can heal the world much more quickly. So let me ask you this. How, who's tested these recipes? Like, I don't know if you, the, last, 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 last Thanksgiving, um, the New York Times used AI to generate Thanksgiving dinners. And at best, they were funky. Like at <laughs> best, they were, you know, a We've little, had- they were a little weird. So- how have you, so you vetted the recipes, yeah. I mean, like, how did you, how, how did you create a collection of recipes that would like actually be palatable for folks? To and be not, honest, like, I don't know, combining, you know, peanuts with, um, 
I don't know what would be weird. I think they had peanuts in one of the one of the New York Times, like classic Thanksgiving. It was just this odd. Anyway, tell tell me about the recipes. So I actually don't know where our recipes are pulled from in terms of like how that technically works. But what I will tell you is I've tried it because I have my own. Of course, I'm going to make my own meal plan. All the recipes are great. Um, And part of it is you never want to shock somebody's system, right? So you're never going to be like, make a whole new different type of cuisine. For the first time, generally you're typing in things like they like smoothies, they like bowls, they like salads, they like oatmeal, they like pizza. And what the AI tool will do is make all of those things healthier or modify them slightly to accomplish the nutrition goals you want. So and you're putting in what they like yep, and what they dislike. So yep. they're starting from a framework that is already necessary and palatable to the, yes. to the participant. So yeah. that helps. Good. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've had thousands of people use them at this point and literally nothing but positive feedback. That's amazing. So it, I haven't heard anyone say they hated the recipe and mm-hmm. people frequently steal my meal plan. So they come in, they see my meal plan on my fridge and they're like, can I have that? And I'm like, I mean, it's not your same calories, <laughs> but if you want the recipe ideas, sure. And so they go home and make them and they love them. That is so cool. All right. Yeah. That's awesome. Kate. I'm actually, you know, it's funny. I was packing my daughter's lunch today feeling like desperate parent, you know, across the country, you know, like what the heck am I going to put in into it? And I, I, I'm going to try, I'm going to do it. I'm going to use the Rupa plan. And so next time we chat, ask ask me, I'm going to get some ideas from Rupa because I'm, I'm like at a loss for her. Bring your daughter on for a testimonial. Oh my God. How cute would that be? Um, all right. So you're doing, so you've got this AI launch with the food plan. That's amazing. You've got Rupa University. And then of course you have the flagship product of making labs available to everybody. Um, what else is going yeah. on over there? It's really anything and everything people ask us for is in our pipeline. And so use our chat. If you're a Rupa user guys, anytime you have a dream, <laughs> like I wish you guys made this, or I wish this would make my life easier. Let us know because we listen to that. I mean, we have an entire channel that we're all going through every day where we look at every single feedback message we get. Wow. And it's because we truly want to know like what to build next that's actually going to move the dial for functional medicine practitioners. Wow. So a great example of that is that a lot of our newer pracs were coming and saying like, I want a resource that will guide me through a functional medicine approach to treating Hashimoto's that I can very quickly access Wow. Because when I look in my own like up to date or Medscape, I get the medications to use, but I don't know how to treat it with functional medicine. Where can I find that? So we started paying amazing functional medicine practitioners to compile write ups on different conditions and protocols that live on the Rupa magazine for free. And so now it's not just practitioners who are using it, actually clients and and people who are just everyday folks wondering well, how would a functional medicine doctor approach Hashimoto's are coming to this site and really getting empowered to understand the type of treatments and the type of approach that's being used in this space and then have more informed conversations with their own practitioners. Um, So that's something that I think that's that because it's free, it often doesn't seem like it's something that we do, but we invest a lot of time and money into that. Um, And practitioners tell us that it really helps. The other thing that we're doing um, is lab shops which is an answer to the problem of how do I reach more people at once? So you and so many, thank God, so many practitioners like you are starting online courses, right? Where they're, instead of teaching clients one-to-one and then repeating the same, you know, like we all feel like at a certain point, we're like, oh my God, I say the same thing five times a week. I might as well just record myself. There's a movement in medicine in general to start to educate the public and then empower them with their own test results to understand what to do. I mean, again, like your book is a beautiful example of this. And so lab shops is a way that you can pair labs with an asynchronous course for your clients. So you can say like, all right, do you have PCOS? Here's the lab panel. Now go through this course. And now you're in a really empowered and forward place to go take the next step with your provider who you probably only get to see twice a year. But this docere part of naturopathic medicine, functional medicine, right? Where docere is the root word of doctor and it means teacher. We see so many of our practitioners realizing I can reach thousands or millions of people online if I'm able to just have a platform where I explain how their body works to them and give them the tools that they need 
to go have the conversation with somebody in a different state. Cause I mean, how heartbreaking is it when someone calls you, they're in a state, you don't have a license in, you can't see them. You don't even know somebody within a hundred miles of them. And it's like, well, what are they supposed to do? Right? So the, it's any way that we can help practitioners reach more people. That's amazing. And that has been, you know, your CEO, Tara's mm -hmm. vision, uh, you know, for, since she started the, since she, uh, even before she broke the company, but it, yeah, it's just, it's, it's she's very so great. cool. Yeah. She's so great. I feel like when people hear Tara's story, it's so easy to be like, Rupa, okay, whatever. You guys are like a tech company. I don't really know what you do. Or maybe you're another company in the functional medicine space. When Tara gets in front of you and she tells you her story, you fall in love with her, first of all. I mean, that I did. And you're like, oh my God, you care. And so what Tara's story is that her dad, and she's okay with me sharing this. I asked her actually, and she shares this a lot. Tara's dad is an excellent ER clinician, but when Tara's mom developed a chronic illness, they really had a hard time figuring out what was going on. And that's when they discovered functional medicine, but it was really hard for them to access. And it was even harder to get the functional medicine tests. And that helped Tara mm -hmm. and her family realize like, because functional medicine ultimately healed her mom, she was like, whoa, uh, we all have higher degrees and like know about medicine. And this took forever at tons of time and stress. And like, imagine what everybody else is going through. And like, how do I fix this? How do I help more people access this type of care? And what she did was brilliant, which is she went straight to the doctors and said, how can I help? How can I help you? They well, told her and she did it. Let me, let's layer onto the fact yeah. that she's a Stanford educated, <laughs> you know, really disruptive Oh yeah. Silicon Valley chick. I mean, she, yeah. so, so the lens was, was, was broad and different than what we generally encounter. Like, mm -hmm. and we needed that. We needed somebody to come to have that experience of the power of functional medicine. And it's very powerful when it's personal like that and have the background capability to mm -hmm. apply this really disruptive lens and you've, you know, con you're basic. That's what you're continuing to do. I'm, I'm, I am, you know, being in this space for, you know, like 15 plus years now, it's exciting for me to see some of this tech, this technology lens being applied um, appropriately. Like it's really exciting for me to see, you know, what you're doing and how you're, 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 you're bringing that power because really for most of my career, it was drop shipping kits that we kept in the office, explaining them, you know, just this very onerous, totally labor intensive, highly low tech, expensive, complete time suck journey. But because that information was so valuable, we all do it. You know, we all do yep. it. We all did it. And so, you know, hats off. And I, I look forward to seeing, you know, whatever, you, the, I, I just look forward to seeing how you will take what you are doing and bring it to us because I know that you're all so committed to making functional medicine available everywhere. I know that that's your truth and, and, and that's what you're doing. Tell me a little bit about you and how you ended up joining Rupa. I mean, clearly you were the head of um, a really successful connect, um, clinic system. And, you know, what's what's your journey about? Actually, even before that, what brought you to naturopathic medicine? Just tell us a little bit about who you are, what brought you into naturopathic medicine and, you know, ultimately brought you over to Rupa. For me, the journey to naturopathic medicine was because I had a personal experience that set me free. And so I was a sick kid. I was sick from 11 to 21. I had wow. daily stomach aches, depression, anxiety, insomnia. Mm -hmm. um, every diagnosis in the book, really great care. Um, I live in Philadelphia and went to CHOP and my doctors were amazing. And they would kind of like patch me up when I got belly aches and send me home and they would do all the right things. But it wasn't until I was 21 that we figured out I had celiac disease. And that's because I saw a functional medicine doctor. And so within three days, I was better. And within three days of taking gluten out of my diet. And so I was hooked after that. I thought, wow, 10 years of struggle, like 10 years of doctor's appointments and being sick and missing out on my adolescence, really. That didn't have to happen. And more importantly, I knew so many other people who were struggling with similar things. 
And I thought, what if this is true for them too? What if they have a root cause that's rooted in some really sound science and biochemistry that would actually be easy to find if, if we just knew what to test. And I thought I have to do this for other people. And so my, my MD who was functional medicine certified said, well, if you want to learn how to do functional medicine from day one in medical school, you should go to naturopathic school. And I researched it and I thought, wow, okay. Along with, you know, all our basic sciences and pharmacy and minor surgery and um, I'm also going to get nutrition and botanical medicine and physical therapy, basically, and um, regular therapy, counseling. Cool. <laughs> I'm going to go there, right? Because the goal is- And a ton a, of nutrition. <laughs> a ton of nutrition. And I actually got even more nutrition training um, beyond school and sought out what is frequently referred to as like functional psychiatry or orthomolecular psychiatry training, like every break. I would find any functional psychiatrist who would let me sit in their office and watch them work. I would do it um, because I had been labeled with a mental health disorder that was actually an autoimmune and gastrointestinal disorder. And so my heart really was for the people who are labeled with similar mental health disorders, but who probably have physiological root causes. And it is so yeah. many people. And I mean, and in so that many. time, right, like I mean, every day, a new paper comes out about the root causes of, of mental health disorders, whether it's yeah. mitochondrial dysfunction, inflammation, nutrition deficiencies, hormonal issues. So we know for a fact in psychiatry, I mean, you pick up a psychiatry journal and it's going to talk about inflammatory biomarkers in mental health disorders or nutrient interventions. Yeah. We're getting there now as a society, but what's happening is we've got the research, we've got the information, but it's not making it into clinical practice. So still the model in the U S is psychiatry and psychology. So you go, you get your pill and then you go and you see your therapist. Yeah. And we're missing the body part of that mind body medicine approach. So we know, for example, that like hypothyroidism can lead to depression. We know that certain nutrient deficiencies can lead to anxiety, including like iron deficiency anemia can lead to anxiety. But how many of you have felt like you or a loved one has experienced those things and have not been checked for those two very common conditions? So my goal was how do I change the standard of care? So that the first time somebody's diagnosed with a mental health disorder, they get a full workup that's actually likely to detect their root cause right then and there instead yeah. of decades of struggle, yeah. which is what I would see every day in my practice. I mean, people coming in 20 years, trying their hardest, having so much of their lives dedicated to just managing their disorder or getting treatment or, and, you know, not reaching their potential with school and work because they're carrying this heavy load. And then we're like, oh, you just needed like an acetal and omega threes and you're good to go. <laughs> you know, like sometimes it's not that hard and they'd be set free and then they go live their life and then they're able to improve the lives of other people because we take that off of their plate and we take the shame away when we do that. Because a lot of times when you have a, even a physical, any kind of chronic illness, if you can't figure out the reason why, a lot of times people will start to blame themselves. Yeah. And they go like, oh, it's just me. I'm just lazy or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, my passion really is in helping people find and heal the root cause of chronic illnesses. It's just, that's an absolutely lovely story. And where there's, there's so many examples, countless examples in functional medicine of similar, I mean, your, you know, your story is all too common and, mm -hmm. you know, very heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. it and takes so you had, yeah, you had a lot of like, backfill to do sort of recovery just around that experience being misdiagnosed, even with the freedom of finally being accurately diagnosed, but losing your adolescence is, you know, no small statement. Yeah. It's, it's funny when the teenagers would come in my practice, what I would say, there is this feeling of being alone when you are sick that young, because so many of your peers are healthy. And what I say to them is you're not the only, you're just the first everybody has their decade where they have something to reckon with. Some people it's their forties and they get an autoimmune disorder. Some people it's their sixties and they get cancer. Nobody gets out of this life for free. Whatever you're dealing with, you're dealing with it right now. We're going to fix it right now. Teach you how to be healthy right now. And the rest of your life, you are going to thrive. So get excited, right? Cause, cause there is like when you're young going through something like that, it, it can be really isolating. Yeah. Um, 
So yes, that's true. And I was very lucky that I got to go straight into med school and learn how to continue to heal my body with celiac disease. Your listeners probably know this, but folks have a ton of nutrient deficiencies usually yeah. by the time right. they're diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you really have to work hard to replete things like iron and calcium and fat soluble vitamins and even B vitamin and you pick a nutrient. <laughs> yeah, that's right. that's right. So thank God I got diagnosed and then thrust into nutrition training so that I could learn to heal myself. Uh, but not everybody has that. And so that's why there's such a fire in me. Like literally every day I wake up and I'm, I'm just like somebody out there is suffering right now and needs help. And so whatever we can do to reach them, we just have to do it. I just read a statistic, World Health Organization, non-communicable diseases, which for everybody listening is chronic illnesses, right? Whether it's cardiovascular disease, any non-infectious illness, they kill 41 people a year across the globe. That's staggering. I'll give you this. It, I didn't believe it when I read it either. This is from the World Health Organization. Like, People die early from these disorders. So when you think, okay, chronic illnesses, am I really making a difference when I help people treat those? Yes, for 41 million people. 41 million people. Yeah. Wow. It's wild. So, I mean, we talk a lot about the burden of chronic illness on society and how many people have them, uh, but just put it, framing it is really helpful. And then talking about like just the level of disability and the life that you lose when you're sick just mm -hmm. makes it an emergency in my opinion. And it makes sense to me now when you said at the beginning, I mean, it's, or it's more impactful now listening to your story, why you would have left what was arguably an incredibly successful practice. And maybe you're still there in some capacity. I don't know. And transition over to Rupa where you can really influence. So you were already locally influencing a lot yeah. of folks with the, with your reach, but it's that what, much. Yeah bigger what now. It made yeah. more of a difference for me. So what would, what started happening, I started writing for Rupa, which if you're a practitioner listening, you guys can submit your case studies. You guys can write for Rupa. Like we want you oh. come <laughs> help us help you spread your message. Um, but I started writing for Rupa and they were publishing on the magazine, which I was super grateful for that, including case studies, because to me, it's so easy to land on somebody's website and read all their promises and the science and their claims. But what I really want to know is, does it work? Mm -hmm. And let me read about somebody who's like me, who's better. And let me read about how much it cost, mm -hmm. right? In my case studies, I would put exactly how much the treatment cost and how long it took. And that would help all of our clients feel safe enough to trust us with their care, which is scary, especially when you have a chronic illness and you've been sick for a while. Usually you've seen a lot of doctors and you've been pretty let down. And so I appreciated that Rupa was publishing those case studies and, and allowing that to be the medicine that people needed to feel like they could drop into that heart space and really connect and trust. And then we could help them heal. So I was doing that. They had me on their podcast and then my phone started ringing off the hook. And I thought, wow, that was really powerful. <laughs> me just like being on a podcast and doing this magazine, just took all the marketing I ever needed to do off my plate and brought all the people who needed me straight to my door. And I'm saving administrative time. And this is all for free for me. I didn't have to pay a single dime. I thought, okay, if I can go do that for other practitioners, just like me, then we're going to help a ton more people heal. Because part of this, if you don't know this, guys, you usually know the closest three hospitals around you. You might not know the top 10 functional medicine doctors in your state. And that's probably because a hospital is well-known. It's established. But it's got a, you know, they got marketing budgets. They have marketing departments, usually, communications departments. When a, when a doctor gets fed up and decides to go into functional medicine on their own, generally they're on their own and they are seeing patients and trying to market. And we do not have marketing degrees. Yeah. And like marketing just means reaching the people who are sick to tell them we're here. Mm -hmm. And while that sounds like it's easy to do, it's not, especially mm -hmm. when you're busy and what you really want to be doing is helping people heal. So to me, Rupa was an answer that I needed. And what it did for my clients was help get them to me and help me heal them fast. And so when the opportunity came up and they asked me to join, I just thought, I, there's no world in which I could say no. Like, I have to be a part of this because this is what's changing the industry to help the clients that I love. That's such a great story. You know, I want to just, I'm saying to my team here and, and to people listening that 
I would love to get connected to some of the cases that you wrote and published and we could put them on our show notes or any, um, and, and, and my team will reach out. We'll just park some of the Rupa magazine content on the show notes page at the Dr. Kara Fitzgerald website. So where this particular podcast will live, if you can wind your way over there, folks, um, you'll find a list of, uh, links for some of the things actually we can we can we can link to the ai uh food plan we can link to you know how you sign up we can link to rupa magazine what you know uh, the university we can just connect you will be a little hub of connecting you to the various um rupa sites or you could just go directly to rupa and do that but we'll we'll bring it onto the show notes specifically it would be really fun to read some of your stories those are very it's, they're so moving powerful stuff. So yeah, it makes sense to me that you would, you would head over to Rupa and I look forward to, you know, witnessing what you do, what you guys, you know, continue to do. Thanks. So we love, and this is the thing that that I'm proud of too, is that we love supporting doctors like you. So, I mean, think about your heart and the fact that like you took time to write your book, do the research you've done, have the podcast you have. I mean, you're changing millions of lives. And so we're proud to sponsor that. I mean, like I can, I feel so lucky every day I get to wake up and I'm like, wow, we get to support the doctors who are doing the best work in the world, right? Whether we're like, Hey, can we sponsor your podcast? Or like, whatever, tell us what you're doing next. How can we help? You know, like yeah. when you have that infrastructure where you can pick out the people who are doing the best work and just help elevate them in any way. Awesome. I mean, it includes everything that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, if we overlaid our missions, you know, and the other people that you're supporting, the other, you know, the the institutes, IFM, you know, Personalized Lifestyle Medicine Institute, you know, the and 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 the labs, you know, everybody's mission is really to change, you know, the paradigm, you know, the 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 the, the so-called healthcare paradigm that we live in. I mean, we really need to change it, and not just in the United States, although this is where we're starting, this is where we are, but really globally. I mean, this yeah. is an all hands on deck effort, all it's hands a- on deck. Yeah. It's a gap. And I explain this to patients and I get, I think I've heard you say this too. It's like, we have excellent care in some ways in, in our country, in America right now. Like when you go to your primary care doctor, they do exactly what they're supposed to do, which is like, get you referrals, get you prescriptions, get you your screenings, but they don't have 90 minutes to teach you how to reverse your type two diabetes. Like that's just a gap right now. It's not that we need these doctors to do anything different. It's that we need more people in this in-between space Mm-hmm. of what do I do every day, the 363 days a year, I'm not at the doctor to take back my own health mm-hmm. based on the evidence. And we, yeah, what that this is the answer to that, that I'm really proud of. Yay. Well, Dr. Kate, it has been just such a fun conversation an important conversation moving. Your story is really powerful. Um, I appreciate the trajectory of your journey. I look forward to just, you know, paying attention to Rupa, paying attention to you um, and watching you guys really disrupt and make this, make this bigger and more accessible. Thanks for having us on today. Absolutely.